Today I'm going to show you three ways how you can use images inside of your ggplot. You can use images in your ggplots as a one-off, just as a decorator, as an eye-catching element, or you could use images inside of your GMs. For example, you could turn a waffle chart into an icon waffle chart by filling the rectangles with an image, or you could even use images as axis labels instead of just regular text. And in all three of those scenarios, you will have to figure out how to get your image file into the ggplot, and that's what I'm going to show you today. What's up, everyone? In case you don't know me, my name is Albert Rapp. And on this channel, I help our users to create better data visualizations. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use free packages to get images into your ggplot. So with that said, let's dive in. In my quarter file, I've already set up a code chunk that loads the tidyverse and creates a small scatter plot that looks like this. It's nothing too fancy, it's just something that uses our favorite penguins dataset. And as I've said, sometimes you just want to insert something into your chart as an eye-catching element. And for our penguins dataset, well, that could be an image of some very cute penguins. And if you look at the documentation of this package, you will actually find some very cute penguins. For example, this image here is great artwork by Alison Horst. And if you have never seen any of her artworks, you definitely should check it out. I will put a link into the description. And this is an image that we might want to use inside of our chart. And of course, you want to make sure that you're actually allowed to use the image. Here, I'm just going to assume that because this is part of the official documentation. So I hope Allison will be okay with that. In any case, what we need to do is to first download this image. Just right click on it, save image as, and then save it wherever your quarter file is. Then back in our studio, you can load the GG image package. And then what you can do is to add a GM image layer and use a new data set because you only want to use this image once and you do not want to use it for every row that is inside of your data set because in this case that would be 344 rows which is a lot we only want to have the penguins once so that's why we create a new data set and we fill it with the columns that we are already using inside of our x and y aesthetic because we don't want to remap the coordinates of the image file and here I've just used 50 as the X coordinate and 20 as the Y coordinate for our image. And then all that's left to do is to map the image aesthetic to our penguins file. In my case, this file name is just the file name of the penguins file that I've downloaded. If you will execute this, you will see that I got an error because I cannot open the image. And the reason for that is because this file right now is not in the working directory that I am currently working in. So this is why I have to set my working directory and I use the here package to navigate to the directory that I'm currently using. And then if I redo this, then I can see the penguins in there. They are really small right now. They're almost not visible. So this is why we can increase the size. Let's just first set it to one. And this will be quite large. So we might want to reduce it. Let's do 0.5. And if we move around the coordinates here, we could just move this a bit to the left or a bit down. Then we could move around the image a little bit. In this case, we could probably move down the image a little bit more so that it is in the bottom left corner where there are no other points. Let's do 38 here, maybe 36. This looks better. I don't think they overlap with points there. All right, cool. Next, let us figure out how to use images inside of GMs. So not as a one-off, but more as an integral part of the data visualization. So first, let's put in something that doesn't use any images yet. Let's throw in a regular waffle chart that just uses squares. I will just throw in the code here because this code isn't really part of this video here. So we'll just use the code as is. But if you want to get a video on how to create waffle charts, just let me know in the comments and I will work on that. So here, if we execute this new code chunk, then we will get a waffle chart. Usually in a waffle chart, you have multiple colors, but here I've just stick to one color because we are just worrying about how to get images in there. And for that, we of course also need an image that we want to stick in there. And one thing that I like to do is to go to Flaticon and get an image file for an icon. And here I got a sneaker and this is the icon I want to use. It is free to use as long as you are attributing to whoever created this icon. So here, this is my way of attributing to this person that created this icon. So once again, you will have to download your file and bring it to your working directory. And once you do, in my case, I just downloaded it and have it as sneaker.png. You can now worry about how to get this into your waffle chart. And the way to do that, if you already have a chart like this and just want to incorporate images into your GM, is really simple. All you have to do is to use the GG pattern package. 
So let's load this package. And then of course, by itself, it doesn't change anything. But what you can do now is to replace your GM tile layer with a GM tile pattern layer. And then we can put in a couple of line breaks. And then if we execute it like this, by default, it will use a stripe pattern. I really like this package because it helps you to put in a lot of different patterns into all kinds of charts. If you want to see how to combine this package with maps of the United States, then check out this video. There should be a notification popping up right about now. But if you want to learn how to use this package for images, stick around here and I will show you. Really, there is not much to it. All you have to do is to use the pattern argument and set it to image because we want to use not a stripe pattern, we want to use an image pattern. And then we need to set the pattern file name argument and then we need to set it to the sneaker.png file that we downloaded. And if we execute this now, you can see that instead of the stripes, you now have the sneakers inside of your files. So now we kind of have our black sneakers on top of a dark blue background, which doesn't look pretty good. So let's just make this to white. And that way we have white background instead. And now we also don't need the color in line with anymore. We'll still look the same. But what we can do is to replace the width and height. I believe by default it uses one. And if you increase both, then obviously things will get larger. Now using only black and white colors can be kind of annoying. So this is why I kind of want to make my colors different. And the thing is, our icon is an image. So we have to figure out how to modify the image because as soon as we import it via an image file, we cannot really modify it. So this is where the magic package comes in, which can help you to modify images from within R. So let me just create a new code chunk up here. And there we modify our sneaker PNG and change the color from black to something like Dodger Blue 4 that we have used before. And as I've said, the way to do that is to use the magic package. And with that, you can use the image read function to read an image. By default, it will immediately show you the image inside of your viewer window. And you can pass the output of this image read function to some other function from the magic package. And here I want to turn this image into a raster. And I don't want to use a tidy raster. And that way I get a matrix that describes the color value for each pixel in that image. So you can see a lot of those pixels are transparent because if you look at the image file, you will see that a lot of this stuff is transparent. So that's why we can save this matrix into a variable and then we can modify all of the cells that are not transparent and set it to some different color. So this is why we take our new variable, filter for the cells that are not transparent and set it to Dodger Blue. So here the code does exactly what we want. We take our variable and we filter it for all the cells where the cell is not transparent. And that way we first get an error because I forgot to execute the first part. And now we get a whole bunch of colors and we want all of those to be set to Dodger Blue 4. So that's what we do. And then we just have to write this new information into a new image. And the way to do that is to first enable an image plotting device. In my case, I use AGG PNG from the rag package. And there you just say all of this will be written into the new file sneaker blue PNG. It should get a width and height of 512 pixels just like before. And the background should be transparent. And then you just have to use the plot function to plot our image information. And then you turn the device off. And if you execute all of this, you will see that you get a message that the device was turned off. And if you look at this image file, you will see that you get your icon back. And instead of black, you now have blue. And that way you can just replace this image file with sneaker blue here. And now you have blue sneakers here. I think the dimensions are a bit smaller now for whatever reason. So let's just increase the width and height. And that way we can always make our image larger again. And if you wanted to use multiple colors with the same icon in your waffle chart, then you would have to repeat this process for as many colors as you want. Save it into a new file. And then instead of hard coding this pattern file name, you will actually have to map it inside of the AES and then use a string here that maps to the correct file name that you used. Nice. We have covered two ways how to use images in your ggplot. Now let me show you how to use images as axis labels. For that, let me first show you what kind of data we're using here. Here we see a chart about the top 10 new banks worldwide in 2022. And the data comes from eMarketer and a firm that's called Simon Kuhar and Partners. 
and it's pretty easy to replicate this chart by just writing out the bank names and the amount that is listed here. And then what we could also do is to head to Wikipedia and then get the bank logos for all of them. And that's exactly what I did in this data set here. It is just the table that has the columns Neobank, market capitalization and logo URL. So you can see here all of these links are from Wikipedia and I've just written down the numbers that is inside of the chart. But there's a problem with the logos that we have here. You see these use SVG images and what we need for our trick to work later on is PNG images. So first we need to download these images and then save them into PNG files instead. And this again is a use case where the magic package can help us. You see, just like in the case before, we can use an image read function, but instead of image read, there is image read SVG. And that way we can read SVG files, even if they are located on the internet, we just have to, instead of a file name, use a URL that leads to the file. So consequently, we can read all of these SVG files by iterating over the logo URL column and then using magic to just save it into a PNG file. So let's make a new code chunk for this. And now we can use the map function to iterate over all the things that are in the logo URL column of our data set that and we will apply the image read SVG function from the magic package on all of these URLs that we have in that column. And this will give us a list of images. So now we need to iterate over this list and save it into a PNG file. And for this file name, we need to use things from the new bank column. So this is why we sent this to the walk to function. And there we additionally use the names from this new bank column. And the function that we apply this on is an anonymous function that uses as a first argument the list of images that we get from this step as a second argument the name from the new bank column. And to define this function, we use the image write function, and there we just have to specify the image and the file path where we want to save this image to. In my case, I save it into logos directory and I use the new bank name as the file name. So once I execute all of this, we can see that in my directory, I have a logos directory and in there I have a whole bunch of PNG files. So now what we can do is first create a regular bar chart and then transform the things so that instead of the labels, we have the images in the chart. So let's create another code chunk for this. And then I'll just throw in the code for the bar chart. Nothing too fancy. I won't go over this in detail. So this is just a regular bar chart. And now we have to transform the Y axis labels. And to do that, we will add a scale Y discrete layer and set the labels to some anonymous function that takes the labels that we have right now and makes a path to the correct image file out of that. So this anonymous function will use the glue function and it will just stick the original name, in this case, that is X, and stick it into an image tag where the source attribute is set to the path of that image. And if you execute this, you can see now that we get labels that just use this image tag. This is something from HTML and CSS. Don't worry too much if you have no clue how that works. You can check out my video on ggplot extensions or my web development for R user series, both of which you can find links to in the description of this video. Here, all that you have to know is that we just need these image tags to make images out of that later on. And inside of these tags, we can also specify the height of the logo that we want to have later on. So obviously we can see all of this text inside of our labels now, but what we do want is to have images instead of these texts there. And this is where our final trick comes in. Namely, we have to turn the Y axis labels into markdown. And this is something you can do with the GG text package. So inside of the theme argument, you just have to set the axis.text.y argument to element markdown from GG text, and that way things will be rendered instead of displayed as text. And if you wanted to, you could also make the height a little bit larger. Let's just set this to 20, and that way the logos are a bit nicer to read. Excellent. So we have covered three ways to use images in your GG plots. And if you want to learn more about GG plot, things like what is the scale Y discrete, how do I make really insightful charts? Why do I use these the minimal things here with base size and base family? All of these things are covered in my data visualization course and you can follow the link to that course if you're interested. So thank you for watching and I will see you next time.